call starting way down here on the right side. Jay Chatmus. James Walsh. Peter Black. Peter Howe. Len Galino, Chair. Dave Johnson. Malcolm Weatherby. Bruce Smith, Code Enforcement. Very good. Today on our agenda, the first item for consideration are the election of officers. We have um, <coughs> two, two uh, officer positions to be appointed. One is for chair, and the other one is for secretary slash vice president. I've heard it referred to both ways. So um, could I have a nomination for the chair position? Are you up at the chair? I am. <laughs> I, I so nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> Acceptance speech, start and finish. Uh, I second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Oh, I thought I was going to have an abstention. <laughs> He's going to be excommunicated. I want the speech. I, I need to listen to the speech, if that's okay. All right, could I have a nomination for uh, secretary slash vice chair? I'd like to nominate Jay Chapmas. I'll second that. All in favor? Acceptance speech? Just a nod. Let, <laughs> let the minutes reflect a nod. Oh, we're short. That's good. <laughs> Another contested issue coming up here, item C, is the approval of the minutes for November 28, 2006. Anyone have any comments on those? If anyone can remember that far back in history? You can tell we've been a very active panel since November 28th. That's right, he's done a good job. It's, it's shielding us from our angry citizens. <laughs> Could I have a uh, motion to approve those minutes? I move that we accept them as written. Seconded. Any comments? All in favor? Another unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, moving over to old business, of which there's none. So we'll move on to new business, which there is some. Today we have the request of how do you pronounce it? Sure. Charlene and David Andrews, 15 Grover Road, tap, tax map U20, <coughs> lot 6F, for a right side property line variance of 14 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a 28 by 28 foot garage with storage above at 11 feet from said line. Could the applicant please uh, take the stand and identify themselves? Present your application, please. Yes, I am Charlyn Andrews, and I am here tonight also on behalf of my husband, David, who is in northern Ontario finishing up a project. And I am here to request a variance in order to build a two-car garage on our Recently, we learned that my husband's company is transferring us to South America for the next two years, and it is primarily for this reason that we have decided to request a variance to build a garage. Now, I must be honest with you. Um, right now, time is valuable, and I rushed into this project without being better informed of the town's zoning regulations. I thought that since we had been granted a variance in 2001, for a two-story, two-car garage with living space on the second floor, that a design for a two-story, two-car garage with the second floor unfinished would not be a problem. Well, after several meetings with Mr. Smith, in which he was very patient and explained to me time and again that I didn't meet the comparisons of the neighbors for size, I finally had the aha moment and um, understood what he was saying. So I found another garage style, which actually David and I prefer, and had it designed, and that is the reason for the addendum to the original proposal. As you can see in the addendum package, we are still requesting a two-car garage with the attached mudroom, 
but we have eliminated the second floor. As stated, it will put our total square footage at 1,924 square feet. Having a garage would be a great benefit to us as we could store our two vehicles on our property while we are away. Without a garage, we would have to leave them in the driveway or find and pay rent to store them elsewhere. Also, the logistics of getting the cars out of storage to use when we came back for visits would be problematic. Another reason for this variance request are health issues and winters in Maine. This winter, David has been on a single status work assignment, and after each snowstorm, I've had the responsibility of clearing snow from the cars, walkways, and driveway. And even though we have the driveway plowed, the cars would be, still have to be cleaned off, moved from the driveway, and there is a fair amount of shoveling to be done. For the past year and a half, I have been in treatment for neck and shoulder injuries. Due to dealing with the snow, there were times that my symptoms were aggravated. We never know when David will have another single status assignment. However, having a garage for the next time that I spend a winter by myself in Maine would make my life much easier. Security and safety are other considerations. Due to David's work assignment, it is not unusual for us to be gone several months. We would feel much safer if the vehicles were secured in a garage. Currently, it is not unusual for me to be gone for several days at a time. Now with the cars parked in the driveway, it is easy for one to determine if the house is occupied or empty. If we had a garage, this would be more difficult to verify. David grew up in the house that we now own. It is our desire to eventually return to Cape Elizabeth and live permanently at 15 Grover Road. We imagine that this will happen when David retires. As we get older, we believe that winter will pose more of a challenge. In our twilight years, a garage would make life less taxing. Personally, for me, the proposed mudroom is something I really hope for. Currently, when one comes into our home, they are coming directly into the kitchen. This is a particular challenge in the winter, as there is no place to put coats, hats, boots, and gloves. The mudroom addition would be a place for family and visitors to put all their winter gear before coming into the house. Now, as you can see by the proposal and the addendum, we have, or I would like to take full ownership for that, I have made a great effort to make certain that our proposed garage meets all local and state codes. A review of our design and situation has been conducted with all of our neighbors, which is referenced in second, Section 8 of our proposal, and they agreed that this pro proposed garage would not affect the aesthetics or decrease the value of our neighborhood. Section 7 of our proposal shows existing garages in our Grover Road neighborhood. Of the 12 houses in the neighborhood, seven presently have garages and one has a barn. As you can see, there are a variety of different styles throughout this area. We believe that after you review this section, in conjunction with our proposed design, you will see that this addition will complement the existing architectural integrity of our neighborhood. Due to design restraints, we would like to request a 14-foot variance from our self-property line, which is referenced in Section 3 of our proposal. We have looked at various locations for placement of the proposed garage, but due to the existing location of the house, septic system, and the design of the garage, we are unable to meet the local requirements of a 25-foot <coughs> setback. In closing, we want to thank you for your time and consideration regarding our endeavor. Thank you. Questions for the applicant? Just let me one comment. Um, she's worked real hard um, to make this work, and, and I, to, to, to that I give her a lot of credit. It's, it's a good application, but it's up to the board to decide. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yeah, along those same lines, uh, Bruce, I mean, I was, I was very pleased with the quality of the application. It was very helpful to me as a first-time uh, board member, really, uh, and it was, it was nice job. Thank you, Mr. Howe. 
Do you know what the variance was that you were granted in 2001, what the sideline variance was? Um, we were going for uh, the same size, but it was 28 by 30, so it was the same. So yeah, it still would have been 11-foot sideline. Yes, sir. And it was, it was considerably larger because we had living space above. It was, so that allowed up to within 11 feet of the side, sideline. On yes. the last one? Yes. yes, sir. And this one you're seeking 14 feet? It's 11 feet. 11 feet. Same. So, same 11 feet. Same seat. It, it's 28 by 28, and the old variance was 28 by 30. And what, why is the need for the new application? Because the... You have to start within a year. Within a year, the, they expired on them. So it's, it's not void. And I'm sorry, give me the dimensions of the original. 28 by 30. And this one is? 28 by 28. And on the, you gave us the, some uh, um, comparable properties that are directly adjacent to your property, I take it. That's in tab seven, is it? In section eight, or seven, seven yes, I'm yeah. sorry, yes, sir. And it, there are one, two, three, am I counting three, four, five, five, five properties that are closer to the setback than yours? Yes, sir. I had a question about that. That these are setbacks just from their garages. Is that correct, or is that the closest setback from their buildings on their? Because <coughs> it says on the sheet that it's the site plan of existing garages. Yeah, that's the seat, and it's it's to, it's to the closest point of. Closest point. Building. So it's not just these aren't just garage distances. This is closest point from the from the building. Okay. Other questions? Ms. Andrews, in, when you applied in 2001, did, do you recall the comparable properties that you used at that time? Was it the same? Much the same. Correct? The properties? I, the, the oh, yes. Actually, I only had the six. Um, the first, um, there are six, and then I went back and, and did six more for this one, so there would be 12, because um, Mr. Smith explained to me that I needed a comparison of at least 10. But the first proposal in 2001, I just had the first page here of the six. Was the, ver was the ordinance different then? <clears throat> no, it was the same ordinance, but um, we had just got into the new standards. So there are... <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the ordinance states that, first of all, let me second the statement that was made earlier regarding your application. I think it's, it, it's very well put together. Typically, we see the comparable setbacks in a table form, but you clearly demonstrated those in pictures, with, and they were very well described and very well referenced with a, an associated map, which helps us to locate. Uh, the ordinance clearly s says that you reference the ten, 10 nearest properties, and you included the 12 nearest properties, which is even better. And, and uh, But the ordinance also states that uh, uh, half of those properties, you're uh, in an in an effort to approve a variance, the intent of the ordinance is that it is in conformance with the typical presentation of the neighborhood. And, and it requests that you compare your desire to the nearest 10 properties. Historically, for at least the last n number of years, we have interpreted that as the ordinance states as to five or more, a half, 50 percent. If they're 10, we're looking at five. Uh, <laughs> in your case, you chose 12. Uh, your property would need to match six or uh, the 10 nearest, uh, 12 nearest, or 50 percent or more. 
uh, it matches five. I looked at the chosen properties that you had uh, selected and tried to eliminate the two furthest away, or two of them, so that, as was mentioned earlier, you meet or exceed five comparable properties. Uh, the ordinance is, is quite clear on, on that and that we need at least 50 percent. Uh, and, and the ordinance is, is also quite clear. There's no clause in the ordinance where uh, we can base our variance on your motivated desire. And I think your needs and, and desire in your presentation is, is quite clear and quite justifiable. The ordinance says otherwise. We need a concrete comparable of, of at least half of the nearest properties to be at or less than yours. Uh, if you were to, instead of have a request 11-foot variance, there's one property that's at 14 feet. Yes, sir. If we, if your application, and I think you know what I'm referring to, if your application had requested a sideline variance of 14 feet, or down to 14 feet, it would be very clear and very straightforward from all aspects, size and sideline setback. And, and just for clarification, for sideline setback variants, we only compare to sideline setbacks. We don't compare to front or rear. It's side comparable with side. If you're requesting a front setback, we'd look at front setback. Have you, in your uh, design, have you considered, instead of making a 28-foot wide garage, making a 25 foot wide garage and in, and the reason why I'm suggesting that I'm not trying to suggest no. a design I'm trying to suggest an avenue that you can apply that would clearly satisfy the the code right. as as it's stated and that's what we need to be able to approve a variance like this okay um, in response to that then let me take a pair of scissors and cut off two of my comparisons, and that would give you five out of ten. So, but but it also. But tried, he, Mr. Chapman suggested that he tried to do that, but you can't pick. Well, you have to. You have but to. I have. If I have, if I didn't take, if I took two off, then I would have five, which is what. But you got to take the two furthest away. You can't. Okay, you so. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood then. Okay. Um, and it, it, The ordinance just is right. a response to 10 nearest is what the or, well, how the ordinance states. And also, um, I, I may throw this, this is my builder, Ken Morin, and I may throw it to him, but if we took that back, then I understand that would probably have to be 25 feet by 28. I would lose the mud room and I would lose the entrance. We would have to have the garage um, set back. Is that right, Ken? It's set back and the, it would be the original entrance that we have at the house now. And then it would just, and you would have to walk out to the garage. What if you did a, a single 16 foot door instead of the two nines? So it would be a two car garage, that would gain you three feet so that you'd have your mudroom. And, and, and. You'd probably have to, I mean, it wouldn't make any difference because your roof line comes down this way, so you're not, not as if you're, you're, you're centering the. the, the right. Right. Taking up 21 feet right now for approximately 20 feet. For the benefit of the audience at home, would you? We want to hear your comments, but we want the audience at home to hear it. Can you come to the microphone? Yeah, if you would mind going to the microphone, that'd be helpful. But you'd gain the the four the three foot you'd lose you'd gain four feet 
because you'd have one 16 foot open and instead of nine, nine and nine is 18 and a two foot uh, center. So you'd gain four, you'd lose three, you'd gain four. Correct, but the interior of the garage will still be, for usable car space, will be 20 feet or less for two cars. I understand, once, once we put I, I the, understand that. Yeah, that's what I'm getting but at. So the interior of the garage. 16 foot doors for two car garages often. Correct, you could put a 16 foot door in, but I mean a, a standard garage is 24. I'm just trying to figure yeah, out. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I, no, I agree with you, Bruce, totally, but I mean, you can definitely fit in a one 16 foot door, but to have adequate space for two cars and they had to open doors with the landing on the left side, 20 feet is, I mean, you're going to be banging doors and the stairs and, I mean, you could definitely get the two cars in, but whether there's room to open doors or not. Whether they're what? Would be room to open the car doors without hitting the car beside it. What's the standard size width of a garage? 24. And 20, like I said, at a minimum landing coming out of the house would be three feet minimum just to pass code. And then we bring the concrete walls and eight inches on both sides. So, I mean, it doesn't give much room to get cars in. Well, the problem we have as a board is we have the standard that we have to find that 50% of the adjacent properties are more non-compliant than the proposed variants. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, you would have to bring in that other 14-foot property, the property that has their setback at 14 feet, then you would be at 50%. Mm -hmm. So if your proposal was at 14 feet, then it's pretty easy for us to get to that point of approving the variance. Without that, based upon the data, that she's pre presented, it's difficult to uh, reach that conclusion that you met the standard of 50%. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the comparables. Their, their property or her property already has an 11 foot sideline on one side. That cannot be counted as one of the 10? It's a good question. Because if you know. take out property 6A, which are, or there's two 6As, a 14 and a 7. Then that leaves, if you count hers, that's five out of ten. I, we ever counted I this? think that's an excellent question. Mr. Smith, comments, please. It's the ten nearest if you want to consider the, the, the one that should, that, that's because it already has a side setback on the left hand side, that's your prerogative. Um, I think it's I think it's something that the board can consider. There's no there's no history. We've never had that. This. We've never had that situation. No precedents to uh, that. We may have, but we never had the, the problem of needing to count it. Right. So, so with that, we would have six properties, and we'd have to eliminate one. And actually, you could probably probably eliminate if you look at the chart. Actually, you could eliminate two. You could eliminate the the two farthest away on the on the bottom of the page. Six. That would uh, be ten properties. Picture Hot. twelve and picture seven. Uh, right. Yeah. These why? Why would you have to limit? You wouldn't have to five. Have, have thirteen properties, then. and you've got six. Oh, I see. That are compliant. Yeah, you have thirteen. Then. So you could eliminate twelve, which is a fourteen-foot set, set there. Seven is and a seven-foot. Eliminate. Or six a. With seven. Well, that's one of the good. No, you, you can't eliminate seven. You just eliminate 12, which would give you uh, 6 to 12, right? Yeah. So we have 6 to 12. And it looks like to me, picture 12 is the furthest away. Again, I would want Mr. Smith to comment whether this is a, a valid observation. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't it, think it's whether funny. we can use. I don't think it's since we're talking about the other side. Where's the definition again? Uh, <laughs> what's the definition? Economic injury under Economic the definition. Injury. I don't have it open to that page. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Um, placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size location and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the most of the nearest property owners. Other lot owners. What Where, page was that? Reading from Bruce with uh, page 17 on definition. It's 
as other lot owners. Jay, I guess I don't I don't see where the five of ten comes in. I mean, it just says no fewer than ten. You had to go to twelve in this particular case to get the comparable. Yeah, but I don't even see where it says fifty percent. Well, it doesn't. But this is what the board has established since the, the standards came out in two thousand one. It, okay, it so does it's not odd. We have used through history. Historically, it doesn't say that. You're correct. Okay. It doesn't say. Well, I was just looking for it. No, I Fifty I percent or more. <laughs> In the past, we have interpreted that as six of ten. We have, again, historically, with justification, relaxed that to five of ten or fifty percent. Then, in that case, it's comparable. If it's if it's less than the majority, then we say that it's not comparable to other standards of the neighborhood. A presentation of the neighborhood. Ideally, ideally, we'd like to see six of ten. More than half. But it's not ordinance. Well, if you read the ordinance, more, the only other way to read the ordinance is more restrictive, that it has to be, um, that the other ten properties have to be even more non compliant than the variance. Don't think I'd agree with you there. Well, how else? I mean, they, <laughs> either, either. either it's an average or it's all, right? What are their approaches there? Well, approach but but the, the, the ordinance uses word comparable, and, right. and it has to be a majority to be comparable, is it, our interpretation of such. Right. If it's, if it's, and we have loosely interpreted that to 50% as being comparable at minimum. Yeah. Oh, five of ten or six of twelve. Five of ten, exactly. Um, in all due respect, I really thought that the the issue would be the size of the garage. I, I honestly, because I was granted the variance in two thousand and one um, for the eleven foot. So. Um, <coughs> And, and also, these measurements are approximate. Um, you know, so picture 12, I, I don't know. I, the, the homeowner wasn't home at the time, um, and I just made an estimate where there was a bush, and I assumed that that was the property line, but it could be less. So. Your, the size is absolutely necessary, too. And yes, that, that right. is, that is right. part of the equation. Yes. But what we're faced with, we, the, the ordinance is, is quite clear cut in a number of issues. And we cannot base our, or let me say that we have gotten away from basing our ruling on motivated desire. We're basing it on the requirements of the ordinance. And that's the, and that is the intent of the ordinance and that is the intent of the writers of the ordinance, is that we base it on facts. And, and so, it, as I think you can hear from our discussion, mm -hmm. we are trying as hard as we can to make this work. We can't bend the rules of the ordinance because it'll, it, it's not the intent of how the ordinance was written. So, that, that I want you to understand that, is that we're on your side, mm -hmm. but we have to have something to justify it. And that's, that's why we're looking at, at all avenues. And in, and in reality, that's the intent of this board, is, is to explore avenues and make sure that what is requested does fall within the boundaries of the, of the ordinance. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, are there any other comments? Jay, did you have another question? Go ahead. Did you have any further comments you wanted to make? I, no, I, I don't. Okay. Um, this is Mr. Mullins, and he lives up the road from us. He is in um, Five, Grover. Five Grover Road. Five Grover, yes. I was just going to ask to see if anybody else wanted to comment on the application. Yes. My garage is 
Could you just, I'm sorry, what's your name again, sir? Martin Mullen. I live in my Roma Road. Yes. My garage is three feet from the property line of my neighbor. And my neighbor down the street from me, the next house. His garage is three feet from my property line. Are those, uh, could I just ask the applicant, are those two properties on your list of co comparable properties? Yes, yes sir. It's pictures uh, two and three, property 60 and 6D. And I show that. Um, properties two and three? Yes, sir. On, on the pictures, pictures yeah. two and three. You show them at six and ten feet? Yes, sir. And he's saying they're three feet each. Yeah. The fence for the property owner at the corner is three feet on his line. So I land that three feet below that. And the other place, I think his driveway must be two feet off my property line. But his garage it wouldn't be much more than three feet. Okay. And those are the properties two and three? Okay. All right. So we've already counted those as yeah. more <clears throat> non-compliant than your application. So they're in, they're in the good column from your perspective. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, anyone else want further comment from the audience on the application? Um, the applicant, do you have further, other information you want us to consider? And as I understand your application at this point, what you would like us to do is to consider the 10 closest properties and include your own house as one of the comparable properties for purposes of meeting the majority requirement uh, or the average requirement. And you, um, in my understanding, is your left side setback as you face the property is 11 feet currently. Correct. Anyone else have further questions for the applicant? Okay, what I'd like to do, unless somebody else has more questions for the applicant, is close. The I have a, a okay, Mr. Uh, I, I just Mr. Chat, Mr. Before we ex explore any further, uh, you have nine foot garage doors, and to the right of the outside door, you have what, two feet space? Is that correct? And in between the two, you have two feet, is that correct? Um, sir, I, I forgot your name. Would you mind coming to the podium? Uh, either one, <coughs> whoever can answer that. What is it? Okay. I guess what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, there's two feet of space in between each. But it's not a two, two, uh, two feet because we have a foundation that will be coming into the garage eight inches. So it's not a true two feet on the right side. I mean, we have an eight inch. The exterior dimension is 28, but then we encroach eight inches on the right side. So we lose that two feet on the right side. So it's actually only. In your, in your original proposal, mm -hmm. You had the width as such as I could see because you had a stairway in the right rear of the garage and you needed width for the stairway. Since you have eliminated that stairway, could, could you shave a foot off the right hand side of the garage door, a foot off the middle and a foot off the left and still keep the mud ring? What I'm trying to do, again, and I'll restate this, is I, I think your house needs a garage, and I see that, and you justify it verbally and, and, and <clears throat> other reasons. We need, we need to make it work. Yes. And if you shave a foot off the right or shave a foot off the middle and shave a foot off the left side of that garage and still leave the, the mud room the width of it, would that work? And if, I mean, you have, if you have big land cruisers and pickup trucks, then you know, it's going to be tight. But if you have smaller cars, it's, it seems like it'd be a nine-foot garage door is quite wide. 
first mall work car. I mean, basically, when you pull on the right side of the garage, if we were to shave a foot off, she would have four inches from the door to the wall, and that is if it wasn't sheet rocked. So, I mean, that doesn't give her much room at all to... Uh, now, the, why is that you're, you're doing insulated, heated garages? No, nope, no, nope. I'm just saying if it was ever sheet rocked in the future, but I'm saying as is, just studded up, she'd have four inches from the time she pulled and tried to miss that side of the garage door with her mirror to the wall. Because the foundation's coming in eight inches, and if I took another foot off, you can't you can't shave anything. She's basically left with anyway, four inches. The code says you got to have uh, either 18 to 24 inch turn for, for stability, structural. That's why my suggestion of a 16 foot door within whatever opening you've got left there would would allow for two cars to park because there's many 16 foot garage doors out there. I know it's Do not the ideal, but yeah. Do you base your sideline setback off foundation exterior or finished siding? To the wall. Finished siding? Yeah. I mean, I don't... Foundation. It's usually, it's a foundation. You, know, you don't get what, within that two inches. Yeah, no, I don't <laughs> get that fussy, but... Ms. Andrews, I had a question for you. Um, on the last page, section eight, You've gotten the signatures of various neighbors consenting to the proposed change. You have a picture on that signature page. Is that the design and the dimensions that you're proposing to build as depicted there? Yes, and I didn't go back and show them the new design, but this design, the original design was much larger. It was a two-story, two-car garage. No, yeah, I didn't the, have the width, the, no. the width didn't change. Width stayed the so same. And the other question is, among these signatures, do you have your two direct abutters on either side of yes, your house? Yes, sir. That would be, um, let's see, it's uh, Serge Serintny at 9 Grover Road, which is the second from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then it was... Uh, Dan Howard. Oh, right. Patricia and Dan Howard right above that at 19 Grover Road. Thank you. Do you, um, do you know what the setback for lot 6K and 5 are? They're not shaded in, on, on your exhibit there, but I was wondering if you, if you knew what those were. Um, I, I believe, 6K, I believe I took that, and it wasn't, it didn't, I don't believe it met the variant, or the setback, and five, um, you know, I, I took that one, and I am sorry, I just don't remember. It was, it was close, though, if I remember correctly, I, I, I want to say it was like, I honestly don't remember, but it was. I wish I had my scratch paper, but I think it was like maybe maybe 12 or something. But I can't be quoted on that. What is the address for picture number three? Uh, picture number three. To your immediate right, when you're facing your house from the street. That is the house next door to me. That is, um... What's the street number? The street number is, uh, 9 Grover Road. 9 Grover. And that would be picture number three. So that's the nine Grover is the house to your immediate right? Yes, sir. If you're facing my house, it's to the right. That's the side on which the garage would yes, sir. be. Yes, sir. Any further questions? And you've spoken to that individual. Yes, and I did show him the new um, design because I wanted him to be aware of what we were proposing. 
and he has not contested or had a problem with it. And that's the uh, Sir, Sir Chinney? I believe so. I, I know him as Serge. <laughs> Thank you. It's interesting that they all did single doors in a lot of these pictures. What's that? A lot of them are single doors. If you look at what they've done here, as opposed to two doors, which is the suggestion that uh, Bruce, you've been making. I mean, three is a single door, five is a single door, one is a single door, four is a single door, and that looks like a fairly new addition. Number 12 is a uh, double door. <clears throat> yeah, that looks like it's a older, much older addition. Than yeah, 14, that's the one with the 14 foot side, side line set back. Did you explore single door? What are your feelings of two door versus one? As, as Mr. Smith asked early on. It's not so much the two doors versus one. I mean, one door would be fine if we could still have the space adequate space for two cars and I mean granted if they do have two compact cars it'd be great but down the road I mean if they ever were to sell or buy a newer vehicle it'd be I mean it, you wouldn't want to be limited by garage size as to what you could buy for a, sure. a vehicle. Sure, I understand that. What is a typical uh, opening for a one, one door double Nine garage? Not, uh, double door is 16 feet. 16? Correct. And the way you have it configured, you have nine and nine's 18, and what is the, the space in the middle? Two, At least two, two feet, or two, two feet, feet? Two feet. So that's 20 feet versus 16 right there. It, Here's your four. There's four feet, and you only need what? Correct, feet? but you still don't have that extra two feet on each <coughs> side, because if we shrunk it four feet, you should lose the two feet on each side. So, I mean, if you came in like this and spread them apart, you could open the passenger side and driver's side door, but you're still going to be pinched on the right or the left. Just because 20 feet is not adequate for a two-car garage. It's, it's just not enough space for wall-to-wall. -wall. If you had a 20-foot opening and put two cars in there and tried to open the doors, there's not enough room in there. I mean, it, maybe if you had two Volkswagens, but... Well, if you had a 16-foot door... Correct. And you had two feet on left and two feet on the right, mm -hmm. you're saying that would... That, that opening would be 20 feet, mm -hmm. and you'd still have the same right side set back from the wall mm -hmm. to the edge of the door, and the same left set back from the mudroom to the edge of the door. What you're doing is taking out the middle column, middle separator. That would not be enough room, you don't feel like? Not, not if you had, say, like if you had two sedans, two Ford Tauruses, and you pull them both in there. I mean, I don't know if you have a garage, but if you have a nine-foot door, you're looking at the mirrors on both sides when you pull in. So if you have a 16-foot door, basically one hitch is left, one hitch is right, and you try and give yourself room to open the two side doors. But she wouldn't have room on the right or the left when she no, I, the... I understand fully. We're just exploring yeah, no, avenues no, I'm, to try to make this correct. work. Yeah, I'm just saying if she did reduce it to 20 feet, it's really not a two-car garage at that point with the landing because we need her, her door into our house is probably four feet above the ground where the grade is going to be for the garage. So she needs access from the house down to the garage and minimum we need three feet just to get that landing down into the garage just to pass code. So that's going to eat up minimum of three feet of the 24 and then if well, the, the landing goes straight ahead. It goes in the direction of the cars, not to the side. But I mean, if, if the garage is 24 overall, if we reduce it to 24. Well, 25. Or 25, you're going to come out of the house, and minimum three feet has gone just on a landing. That's if we go as small as we can without a wall, you know, separating it. And then the foundation comes in another eight inches. So, I mean, we have 20 feet or, or less to work with for the for the garage, if, if we were to bump it down to 24. Right now you have the... Or 25. Or 25, sorry. You have the outside of house to outside of garage is 28. Yep. We need 
we need this to be 25. Mm -hmm. okay. What is the minimum width of your mudroom landing? Three feet. How much? Three feet, 36 inches. Well, couldn't you make it four feet? And then you would have 21 feet for garage width instead of 24? That's what I'm... If I make it bigger, I'm going into the garage more because the landing is in the garage. So when you come out that house door, whatever I take up for three feet is the minimum for her to walk out and walk down a set of stairs. So if I go four feet, that's just gives her less room. Well, right ground. now you have four six. Mm-hmm. Well, if you made the, the mudroom width the minimum of three feet, yep. you'd have about three foot six with the wall. Correct. So that would leave you 22 foot six inches for the garage, which is you know, foot, one foot six inches less than a normal 24 foot garage. So if it was 25, what, what are you basing that right. measurement on 25 I'm feet? I'm basing it on 25 feet. And if we went three six? So you're, you're, you're foot six under what a 24 foot garage would support two nine foot doors. So if you're well, 16, be, you're only losing. It would be 21. Uh, nine inches. It would be 21. So if we had a three six landing, the foundation's in eight, eight inches. Yeah, but it's there on a 24 foot. Well, that's what I'm foundation saying. If you land isn't... into the outside, you end up with 22.6, which is one foot six inches less than a 24 foot garage. That's all you lose. If the overall garage is 25 feet? Right. She's coming into the garage three feet six inches. Right. So, so what's 22 that foot six from that wall to the other wall. That's a foot, one foot six inches less than a 24 foot garage. That leaves us 21 six. Because you're counting this? No, no, that leaves us, I mean, from the outside of this is 25, I've been three and a half feet. Right. Three and a half feet, 21 six. So you're losing two, eight inches. Sorry. And if I count the wall in the interior, that gives us just over 20 feet. Yeah. You know, the eight inches coming yeah, back well, in. But I'm trying to compare the 20. Yeah, no, no, I know what you're saying. What I, what I would like to two and a half feet. What I would like to do, unless anybody has any strong objection to this, is, um, as I understand, your current position is that you would like us to consider the application as submitted, right? As, pardon? Yeah. Yes. As amended, but yes. As amended before we came in here today. Yes, sir. Um, what I would propose is that we close the discussion with them for a little bit and have a discussion among us and see if the feeling of the members of the panel is to this particular issue. Um, but reserving the right uh, for the applicant to amend your application, if you so desire, before we take a final vote on your application. Okay. Anybody okay. have any objection to that? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to close the discussion for now. We may reopen it. Okay. But what I'd like to do is have a discussion among the panel to give these various people's okay. feelings about this particular application. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Um, let me start off. I, I totally appreciate where it's a difficult application in the sense that it's right on the cusp of needing compliance with uh, the standard for the variance of establishing significant economic injury. And basically, in the past, we've never dealt with the question of whether or not we could count your property as one of the non-compliant properties for the for purposes of establishing that average standard. So that's the first time that's been put before us. And as I understand it, what we have the situation is that if we count your property, we have an average. We have 50% of the properties that are more non-compliant than uh, the subject application. Is more or equal non-compliance because your property is at 11 feet on the left side. My own feeling on it is, is that the standard we have adopted <coughs> has a little bit of flexibility in it and something that weighs in sort of in my mind that what would weigh in favor of us being lenient, uh, slightly lenient on the situation and including her property within the accounting is the fact that she did go through the effort of contacting all our neighbors uh, and having all our neighbors sign off on it 
including the two neighbors that are directly adjacent to your property, and apparently they are not concerned with the um, with the uh, potential encroachment on the setback requirement on that on that right side, and. Um, Given that fact, given the fact that no other neighbors have shown up to object, and apparently about 10 neighbors have signed the letter that you put together indicating 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 neighbors have signed the letter indicating they have no objection to this variance, I guess my initial thoughts anyway are that this um, meets the, the requirements for, and while I rec let me back up, while I recognize the neighbor's consent is technically not a factor under the, st under the statute under significant economic injury, in my own mind in trying to interpret that statute, certainly I find it um, easier to interpret the statute favorably for the applicant in this situation than it would be if the directly abutting neighbors were vehemently opposed to this. So that's my thoughts, but I'm, I'm going to leave an open mind about it until you hear from everybody else. I, when I look at this neighborhood, uh, um, it seems to me that um, what she's asking for is comparable to what the neighborhood, the existing neighborhood, all these, all these lots are non-conforming. They all, none of them meet the setback. And some of them, a lot of them are, are more non-conforming than hers. But even, even the ones that are less non-conforming are still non-conforming. And they have similar garages to what she's requesting. And if we were prepared to allow her to get to, if we would approve her application with a smaller garage, which would actually have a more negative impact on the property values than a larger, better garage, then I think we should approve it with the larger garage. In other words, we were asking her to shrink the garage and make it a small two-car garage, and that would actually decrease her property value. That would be a less pro valuable property than it would be with a full two-car garage that, that didn't conform to the ordinance by an extra three feet. And to me, that would be a, a, a worse situation than, than approving the application like it is now. So I, I, would, I would approve it like it is, and I think it meets the, um, the significant economic injury prong. Thank you. Mr. Wallace. I guess my, I direct my comments to Peter about that. If, if the 25-foot garage is what would satisfy the ordinance and, and the particular requirements placed on this board. Um, all the wishful thinking in the world to have a mudroom and to have all of that, I mean, the fact of the matter is, nice to have, but you can't in this particular environment. So, you know, I, I guess I'm a little, little concerned that there isn't the willingness to modify the plan based upon what can or can't be done in this particular um, neighborhood. I do agree with you on the neighborhood that there are houses of very similar uh, style and they're all in non-conforming situations, but uh, you know, a garage is a garage. There are people who bought houses in that neighborhood with garages that they're stuck with. <laughs> so I don't buy the long-term, uh, you know, negative impact to that property. But I do think that if, there, if all we can have is the 25 foot, then we should be working towards delivering on that as opposed to three additional feet um, because she wants a mudroom and everything else. I mean, I think the fact is that she's made such a great case here for having, having a garage. And I think that that three feet is something that could come out of this if, if, if uh, the applicant and her builder were creative and still get her the things that she's looking for. <coughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to agree with my members immediate right. Uh, and I'm also going to have to take issue with the 25 feet. I, uh, I'm sorry, I don't see where there's any requirement that it be brought down to 25 feet in the ordinance. Uh, red page 17, uh, it does not say anything about 25 feet. It may have at one point been 
a precedent set by this board. Uh, uh, or just, just let me comment there. The setback is 25 feet. Right. That's, that's not up for that's not dispute. Uh, that's not the dispute. That's the dispute. district, but, but, it's 25 but we're being, we're, we're, Right, but we're being asked for the variance. I mean, that's the point of this board, is to grant something different from the 25 feet. If it, that's what our judgment right. is if supposed it, to do. If it meets this, if it meets this definition, significant right. of economic injury. Right, and so far, three have said it meets it needs significant economic injury. I agree with that. There's four. Uh, what I don't see is that like count is you and him, three so far. Okay, three. Yeah. Uh, what I don't maybe see me. is a maybe me. Is I'm, a I'm being, I haven't decided. It, what I don't see is why we can't vary from the 25 feet. I see nothing there that says we can't do that. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, that may be the purpose of this board is to look at it, use our judgment to determine whether or not this actually is comparable with the neighborhood whether it hurts the neighborhood, whether it enhances the neighborhood, uh, whether it serves a, 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 a purpose for the town uh, to do that. And I think in this case it does. Uh, but then you also have the hurdle of, of using their property as, as justification, which well, is I, I, brand new in terms of this board's previous history. Um, no but, offense, but I mean that. We do set precedent. <laughs> I have several comments. Uh, okay. I'd like to go back first to what the chairman said. Uh, and it, certainly we take into account neighbors who voice opinion. We cannot and must not base our decision on support or lack of support by the neighbors. And, and if, if we do that, we are getting into extremely muddy territory because in any instance you can find support or lack of support based on personality and, and a number of other very subjective reasons in the neighborhood. So I, I have, unfortunately we have to discount in my mind to a great degree if, if all neighbors, if neighbors are in support of it, that doesn't tip it, in, in, in my opinion. If, if it is on the peak and the next door neighbor strongly objects, then I think that voice is certainly registered. So I don't see support of the neighborhood as, as too influencing a factor in this. Uh, regarding the other comment that was made, uh, we need to base our decisions, in my mind, on objective uh, points and not subjective. And if we get into what we think looks good or feels good for the neighborhood, then we're getting in as deep water as anything else. We have to base our decisions on, on purely objective natures, in my mind, Otherwise, we are faced with making random decisions here and there based on another number of very subjective, and I don't see how we could function effectively as a board based making our decisions on subjective decisions. Regarding your statement, the ordinance makes it very clear the 25 feet. I was, the 25 feet I was talking about was reducing the garage to the 25 feet, not the ordinance. To we, the ordinance so, makes it very clear that the applicant has to be comparable to the neighborhood, and we have long set standard and interpreted that to mean, as I explained earlier in detail, a majority of the neighborhood, and we, it, we in my mind, simply cannot de deviate from that. Now, two questions have to be asked. Uh, let's take away the, the, the mudroom on this. Uh, two questions that I always attempt to ask in, in any type of variance like this is, is, is what is being requested 
mandatory or is it simply motivated desire? And I think we need first thing we need to do is separate that, not the first thing. That's one of the core things we have to do. If you take away the mudroom, now I'm just looking at numbers, a 28-foot two-car, uh, take away the mudroom, and that leaves a 23-6, 24. Standard width for a one-car garage is 12 feet. Standard width for two-car garage is 24 feet. I believe I'm correct in saying that. That's typical. I mean, uh, that's, that's a, a typical. And then on top of that, you add the, the, the mudroom, which is, I think is a reasonable request. Making the overall garage 28 feet, well, that's quite large. I don't know how large the house is and, and width. Do you have any idea how? What, I would, what I'd like to do is, rather than, I would like to get everybody's comments first on this, the, the application that's before us. That's what I'm trying to establish, Mr. Chairman, is, is, is my comments on this. And, and I, again, I think we need to separate motivated desire from requirements. I see the possibility in this neighborhood with this size house with this cluster of houses, that it is within reason to configure a two-car garage and have the overall width 25 feet, with a mudroom 25 feet. So well, I, I think that what is clearly motivated desire uh, can meet the requirements, and then we don't have a discussion of meeting comparable uh, neighborhood standards. Right, but that's not the application before us. The application before us is 28 feet right now. And that's, they've asked us to consider that, and that's what we're debating right now. And so I understand your points. One question for you, though, Dr. Chapmas. The point has been raised that if you count their property as nonconforming, then they do meet the average test. And I just wanted your comments as to why or why not that works. Because their left side property line is already 11 feet. Well, can, can I jump in here for a minute? Please. Just, just on that issue, I, you know, I, I look at this definition of significant economic injury and it seems clear to me from the plain language that we can't take into account her setback here because it says other lot owners. Yeah. If we didn't have the word other in there, I think we could. It just said comparable in size, location, number to those of lot owners. I mean, if you're comparing it to yourself, it kind of it's an exception that would eat the rule there. So I, I, I think that on that discrete issue, as much as we might like to be able to look at her dimensions, I don't think we can because of the presence of that word other there. It, I will, unfortunately, I have to support that. I think that. I think that's probably in reality. As much as I would like to uh, use her own property as, as a comparable, I don't. It's hard for me to justify right. that Let's because it, uh, the way the ordinance states. Logically, it's hard to compare a lot to itself anyways. I mean. Well, the other language in the ordinance, too, goes on to say, but in no fewer cases than 10 of the nearest property owners. Right. So nearest also re seems to imply the property other than the subject property. So I'd, I agree with that view. Other comments? Yeah, I just wanted to <clears throat> point out that um, respond to Mr. Chat, Chatmas a little bit because I, I mean, I, I agree with some of the points he made that we have to have objective criteria and I agree that we have to apply the ordinance as written. And when I read this ordinance, and, and I just want to make one caveat, I don't think we can rewrite these ordinances. Um, and if they require some subjective decision making, um, I think that's a good thing so we can apply our common sense and we don't have to do something that would not make common sense, would not, would, would go against common sense. And so when I read the, the ordinance definition of significant economic injury, um, it doesn't say that anything about being less conforming than other lots, it just says comparable. So I think we get to decide whether something's comparable or not. And if it's less conforming, that would be comparable. But if it's non-conforming um, and only slightly less, less non or more, uh, more conforming than what's being asked for, to me, that's comparable as well. 
especially when the whole neighborhood is non-conforming like what we have here. Um, I, How do you get around the language that says placing the applicant for, for a, va a variance at a disadvantage to, in no case, fewer than 10 of the nearest properties? How can you argue that if they're looking for 11 feet and the other non-conforming property is non-conforming because it's at 20 feet, how does that place them at a disadvantage to that 20-foot property? Because they're not, well, I, I believe that the, the 10 nearest property is defining the scope of the immediate neighborhood. That, that's what that means. So in, No, I understand that. Yeah, okay. But what I'm saying is the way Less, we've interpreted in the past is that a disadvantage, that disadvantage has to be compared relative on measurement. In other words, that a disadvantage, if there's, if there's 10 houses that are directly adjacent and they're all at 11 feet or less on the setback sidelines, then it's obvious that you're at a disadvantage to those other 10 properties. But if six of the properties are at 20 feet and you're looking to go to, go to 11 feet, aren't you going into a position that's more advantageous than those six other properties? Yeah, I mean, I, I think what it means at a, at a disadvantage means that they can't have a comparable structure. And we decide what's comparable. And the example that you said where everybody's got 20-foot setbacks, then, then maybe a 10-foot setback is not comparable because it's, it's outside the, the norm. Have here we've got four properties that are less than 11 feet. Substantially less. The rest less. are all more than 11 Correct. feet. Correct. And, and none of them five conform. Of Excuse me, five. And none of them conform. I mean, there's one, her next door neighbor has a six foot, so, so that's five foot less than what she's asking for. Um, and even the ones that conform, I mean, the, even the ones that we, that we, some of us are suggesting we should discount, are, are only, are still violate the, the setback requirement by five feet, four feet. Um, the this, this six, lot 6H six violates it by eight feet. So the difference between eight feet and 11 feet, uh, and 14 feet is not substantial to me. That's still comparable, that's still a comparable um, property in this neighborhood. Of course, if you follow your logic, then if they ask for one foot setback, as long as you could show that there are 10 properties, or excuse me, five properties that are less than 25 feet, you could go to one foot, which doesn't seem to make much sense. No. The way my, you, you, under your theory. No, not, no, I don't think that's right. I don't Why think that's not? right, because that wouldn't be a comparable um, property. Because there is no one foot setback. But how do you distinguish between one foot and 11 feet versus 14 feet? In other words, you're saying 11 foot's relatively close to 14 feet. What makes it relatively close? I mean, that's just in the eye of the boulder. It's, it's a judgment call by the board. It's common sense. And if, if we didn't, in my mind, if we, if we made her shrink this garage to a design but we can't make her do anything. Yeah, exactly. We can, exactly, we can but, only vote yeah, up or down right. on our application. But, but if we consider, if we would approve a, a design that was, was slightly smaller and made the, the garage a non-standard garage that wasn't a, you know, a standard two-car garage, and we would approve that application, um, it doesn't make sense to me that we wouldn't approve one that's three feet longer, that's, that's three feet wider, that would make the property more valuable, that would make the neighborhood I mean, that's, more that's, valuable. I mean, yeah, I, follow, I, I guess I don't follow <laughs> that argument because you could, if, you could, if you could always make that argument, then the argument would always be, low. Well, why can't I go to, it would be more valuable to go out to one foot from the property setback line. I mean, if, you, if the assumption is the bigger is always better, more valuable, then let's do away with setback. <laughs> But obviously, setbacks from value to the neighborhood because you keep houses a comfortable distance from one another. Right, and I didn't say always. I mean, what I'm saying is you have to apply your judgment, and it has to. It depends on the character of the neighborhood and what the neighbors are doing. In this neighborhood, um, to me, in my judgment, 11 feet is comparable to what all these neighborhoods are doing. What all what all these neighbors are doing. One foot would not be comparable to what these neighbors are doing. Any other comments? Mr. Yeah. Smith, you want to go ahead, Mr. Yeah, I, I have one question. I, I understand what you're saying, and, and I agree. If if we are going to look at these and it's cut and dried, 
majority, why are we even discussing it? Why does it come before the board if it's going to be a majority of the properties? Why doesn't Bruce decide before? before? It's just under the ordinance, it comes to the board for variance. It's just the way it's written. I mean, there, there are criteria that they, our, our, our duty is to enforce the ordinance as written. And there are certain things that Bruce has discretion under the ordinance to do on his own accord. And there are certain other questions that have to come before the board to get approval. One of them is variance. And, and I, I just got to say that I honestly thought, and both Sherilyn and I thought, that we had to, she had to distance. Right. There was a majority. How do you figure? It, it, we don't. Something but, went, well, hey, well it, was, it was a variance of 14 feet at 11 feet, and for some reason it got in my mind that it was 14 feet, so that I would have, you would have and I caught this 14 foot property. I, I caught this just tonight, oh. or this afternoon, so I would have, you know, she would still have the opportunity to take this forward. Uh, I only can only advise what the board would, would be looking under based on past history. Yeah. And, I, and I don't want to kill this application, but generically speaking, um, when I worked with the, with the audience committee on this section, the intent was to exactly what Jay said. That was the intent. Did we amend this section uh, under the 96, uh, 2006 amendments? Not the, 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 the no. That stayed the same, right? Yeah. yeah. So in 2001, or whenever these were adopted, that was the intent of the audience committee, is to have, we had to come up with these standards yep. based on, on guidance from the state. Yep. And that's, that's what they came up with. And since then, um, it has been established by the board that that's what they use for criteria. So when someone like Sherilyn comes in, I can, I can guide her or guide that applicant based on the fact that I know that, th that this board will, will use what's been established. Not that you can, as a majority, decide at any point that it, it, it's, it's something else you want to look at. But I think until you, until you have a discussion on that as an agenda item, that you don't want to follow that, that you have another way to follow it. I don't think you should change in mid-course. I think you should stick to what's already been established based on what the audience committee felt should be done and based on history of this board in six years of using these standards. Uh, and, and, and I know that doesn't help Cheryl Lynn's case, but I, I, without that guidance from the board and without consistency with the board, Makes your job. You're, you're going you're gonna to have applicant upon applicant because that's what it used to be before 2001 when they did use the neighbors yeah. as a list yeah. of, you know, if there was nobody opposed, okay. I mean, that's the same way with every board across the state of Maine. And that's why they made standards that were more reasonable because nobody could pass the hardship test. And so it was a matter of, of whether you were popular in the neighborhood or, 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 or not. And, and, and so I couldn't tell an applicant because he always had a 50-50 chance. Yeah. Bruce, now I can yeah. tell the applicant that. Bruce, one thing for future reference I think would be helpful is if we actually had a calculation sheet with each of these applications and maybe it would avoid this problem in the future. Well, I don't know if I would have picked it up or not. I mean, it, it, was a, it was a... Well, if they do the calculation, they give us a sheet doing the calculations, number of properties, number less yep. than, number more than. Like we've seen in the past. Yep, yep I can share that way. way. Yes. Sure. Because it's, you know, I, I feel bad for the applicant coming forward, putting a lot of effort in, and then finding out that they don't meet the mathematical standard. Well, I think, I, I think the applicant would still go on forward um, and hope for the best. Well, I've got to apologize, but <clears throat> I still disagree with you. I think if you wanted that standard in the ordinance, it could have been put in the ordinance. The standard is not in the ordinance. It doesn't say specifically that we have to have five of ten. You could have said we have to have five of ten if you'd wanted it in the ordinance. Specifically, it's not there. It could be six of ten, six of twelve, four of fives. It's, it is completely silent on that. And uh, I, so I think so yeah, I, I am obligated to sit here, read the ordinance, and decide in my own mind what is the predominance of the evidence in that neighborhood. What is a comparable property? It's not in the ordinance. Well, we can agree to disagree, but everybody understands where we're at this point, so I think we ought to... 
move along. Uh, Mr. Johnson, do you have any comments? Uh, not, not any further comments? Uh, well, uh, just as a response to that, I think the ordinance is clear in the word comparable. If if less than 50 percent, then you're not comparable to the neighborhood. And and to me, that's just as clear as daylight that that to be comparable to something, you have to be at the midpoint or the majority. And if you're less than the majority, and if you, it, let's use this, let's use five out of 10 for simplicity. And they come with, well, four out of 10. And then the next guy comes with, well, three out of 10. And then, you know, then two out of 10. And, you know, well, I want to go down to six feet. You know, I, we have to have, objective standards to go by. And historically, this board has established that the definition of comparable, so that we have some semblance of order from case to case, we have established precedents that that's 50% or more. That's how you compare the neighborhood. Now, to further that, uh, the and if you, anything less than 25 feet is, is, is not conforming for sideline setback. And we don't look at left and right, we look at a side to side. And, but the, the way I have justified that, the way we have justified that in, in response to your earlier comment, is the look and feel of the neighborhood. If they're, all the houses are jammed on top of each other, then that's the look and feel. But we have to have something objective to establish that look and feel. We just can't drive through the neighborhood and say, yeah, they're all close together. Let's approve this one to be close together. So we have established that, OK, show us that, that pick 10 of your neighbors. Show us that half of those neighbors are within 11 feet of the sideline. Then you have an objective look and feel to the neighborhood. And that's what we're basing this on. And, and, and I understand what y'all are saying, but I have to humbly disagree. We have to have comparables, and we have defined, you can do whatever you want to. No, Historically, the board has defined comparable as 50% or more. I mean, it, it, to me, that's just as clear as daylight. And, and you know, and. Well, the history is what the history is. That's the way we've interpreted that's it. That's what past. we've done it. Whether it's and there's right no debate wrong. about that. You, you, you were not aware of that because you weren't on the board before. But, but that, and that's okay. Jay's, Jay's okay. accurate with that rendition but, but, of the history. No, I, I'm not any smarter than anybody else on this board. But I think as a board, for us to function properly, we can't just say, well, it looks like it. It's okay. We have to have numbers both comparable sideline setbacks and comparable count of properties to compare. And that, that's, that's my only, only point. One other, one a, I mean, I, I, just I, before, I, before, before you respond, just let me say one other thing about this interpretation. I'm sorry to put you through this debate here, but for the future reference, I think it's helpful for us considering these issues in the future. If you read the statute, uh, Significant Economic Injury, the ordinance, there, I think this panel is given about as a uh, liberal a, a interpretation of that section as you could give it. It, it, it. There's a very plausible argument if you look at that language that you have to be, um, the other properties have to be more non-compliant than yours, all 10 of them. I mean, there's a reasonable read of that, that all 10 of them have to be more non-compliant than your application in order to meet the language of that standard. But this board has been liberal in the interpretation and said, no, we will just look at the majority. So I think, um, the, it, 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 I think the panel has gone about, in the past, has gone about as far as one can um, try to push that language to be, to be accommodating. And in support of what you say, Mr. Chairman, you're exactly correct. Because when I first came on this board, it was 6 of 10. And we have relaxed that to 5 of 10 as yeah. being comparable. Yeah. OK. Um, the way I count it, um, just informally, um, because I want to give the applicant an opportunity to m amend their application if uh, for orally tonight, if we don't, if they don't have the votes. <coughs> what I'd like to do is take an informal vote, um, and this doesn't count. <laughs> Anybody have any objection to that? 
How many would be in favor of approving this application as it's currently listed at 28 feet? Two. Okay. All right. Based on that, it was not an official vote. Um, before we do take an official vote on the current application, I wanted to give you the opportunity to, to amend the application if you so desire. Can I just say something? Sure, go ahead. If, uh, if you don't consider her house as one of the lots when you look at the 50 percent, yeah. that would mean the neighbor across the street could use her lot and five other ones and get an 11th of variance because they'd meet 50 percent. That, that's true because the statute if you, if you want to see the language, I'm happy to show it to no, you. No, but that doesn't make sense that a neighbor could get the variance for 11 feet because they could use her as a comparison, but she can't. Well, the logic behind it is this, is that significant economic injury, the idea is that you've got to keep things in a historical perspective. Mm -hmm. Back many, many years ago, there were no zoning ordinances. Correct. So a lot of houses were built before the zoning ordinances went into place. So some of them were at 11 feet, 10 feet, 5 feet, whatever. Then the town comes along and says, gee, we want to have 25-foot setbacks for new construction. But you still have a lot of these older homes. So there's some neighborhoods that are new, like Cross Hill, et cetera, yeah. where everybody's at 25 feet. So the idea is if you come to us from Cross Hill and say, I want a 10-foot setback, the answer is no. And the reason for that is because everybody else has 25 feet. You should live with 25 feet. However, in the older neighborhoods where there is not that situation where you have a lot of houses that were built bef before the current ordinance, mm -hmm. and let's say there's a majority of the neighbors that are at more nonconforming, let's say five feet, the concept is that if you're at 15 feet, it's unfair to you that all your neighbors are at five feet. So the idea is we're going to cut you some slack because you're putting a significant economic injury in relation to your immediately abutting 10 neighbors. Mm -hmm. So you follow the concept. So it's true. If the neighbor across the street came to us and asked for a variance, she could use um, the Andrew's property as a comparable. It was but, one of their but in turn, Andrew's could use the one across, across the, street. the street and now get a variance. That's right. That's right. Possibly. Right. So you just keep giving variances based on if the other neighbor wanted to build an addition, then hers would be okay? If they can meet the majority rule. I mean, the only thing, I mean, I don't know your name, sir, but you don't have a tag there, but when he made his point, if we have a bunch of neighbors at three feet, it would only seem right to take an average, not to take, you know, if you have three, three, average six, seven, be, 14. Work higher than 11. I mean, there's only 10 houses on the road to begin with. And all of them, but two have a garage, I believe. And that was what I'm saying. If the person across the street requested a variance of 11 feet, they'd be granted that variance based on her 11-foot side setback. Right. I think what you have is a situation, though, where I think you got six, two, uh, five panel members that are pretty solid in their mm -hmm. approach that um, the current 28-foot request is not going to fly. Unfortunately, you just missed the mathematical standard, but it is the standard. I think uh, my understanding is, please shake your head no if I got this wrong, but if you amended your application to be a 20 to 14 foot uh, request for the setback, there's no opposition. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's kind of where you're standing right at this point, and you're welcome to, you have a number of choices. You could ask us to approve it as written at 28 feet, and I think the votes are not there for you. You can amend it to a 14-foot setback requirement, which I think the votes are there for you, or you can table it till next meeting or till next meeting to consider it, or you can withdraw it. I think those are your four options. Can I ask one question? Sure. Is there any possibility that some of these measurements that you have yeah, are yeah. not yes. completely accurate, that maybe some of these might actually be closer than what you put, like the gentleman brought up before that there's two right there that were but significantly some could be closer. farther away too. I mean the board has always they allowed the applicant to do the best job they can and they've taken that without going out with a full survey. I don't think you should be going down that road. Okay. But um, you know it, the applicant does what as best they can and the board has always taken that as as uh, do you want a two minute break to consider those options? 
you want a couple minute break? I mean, my, my only my only problem with that is like she would say is if is if next board meeting we had the neighbor come from next door and, a cra and request a variance for an addition, she would be granted hers the same day. Is that how that would work? I mean, I'm, I'm not being wise. I'm not just asking. Necessarily. I mean, they, they. I mean, then she'd have the majority. So they've always done the majority. Six. Yes. That they've already given down to 50. That doesn't mean they would do that every time. Yeah, but it's, that's that's the standard. That's that's your standard. Uh, no, I think maybe if I understand, it, there's seven criteria that we're, yeah, we're I, yeah, judging this for. Yep. There's only one that seems to be a trip point on mm -hmm. her application. That's and, why we're and, dwelling on the one that's the trip point. Uh, no, there's seven different uh, yeah, criteria that have to be met. And we're, we're not bothering with those. We're yeah, correct, but I'm just saying, so if somebody else got a variance next time on that road, she'd be granted hers, is that how? If somebody else got a variance to less than to match, 11, 11 feet? feet. Yeah, because they'd have the majority. If, there, if that pushed her over the edge of having then 10, uh, meeting the five of the 10, then I guess it would. Why, you got another one in your back pocket? No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying the, the bad thing is that if a neighbor requested a variance, they'd have, they'd have the votes, they'd have enough, and they'd get it, and she doesn't, because she can't use her own. That's the only point I'm making. Yeah. When you yeah. use the comparison, that you can't use, if there's 10 houses in the neighborhood, you have to count yeah. hers as five, yeah. as the fifth one. Well, I hope you can appreciate the panel has been struggling to find a way to help her get this approved, and I even started out by musing that. Maybe we no, could no, use I her property, but unfortunately, I think Mr. Johnson's interpretation of the language is correct. Yeah, and I do understand, but I'm just saying, if there's 10 houses on the road... Would you like to take a couple-minute break? Sure, why don't we take a five-minute break? I was ready to move. I was ready to move the property until you brought that up about other... Yeah, you think guys can't talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can't be.
Back on the record for the April 24, 2007 Zoning Board of Appeals agenda, we're working on new business, business item number one, the request of the Andrews at 15 Grove, Grover Road to uh, seek a sideline variance. We took a short break to allow the applicant to consider whether or not they wanted us to, uh, to prosecute the, um, the application as um, submitted tonight for a vote, amend the application, table the application or withdraw the application. And I understand the applicant, you prefer to table it for now to the next meeting? I would, and I really want to thank you all for the effort that you made um, to, to pass it and awesome. the discussion and, and everything that was said and the effort that's put into it. Um, I just want to go back and do some more measuring um, and also to, I, I can't visualize the 25 foot garage um, and how, especially if we had the stairs on the inside of the um, garage because the, um, that it has to be the three feet for the code and, and the way to get into our house, it's built up. So I, before I would agree to something like that, I need to visually see it on paper. And well, that sounds like a good choice. Rather than rush into it, why don't you give it some more contemplation and we can put it on the agenda for next month. Okay, thank you. And um, You want us to have it on the agenda for next month? Or yes. you'll let Mr. Smith know whether or not you want Yes, I'll definitely feedback. be on the agenda for next month and, and you'll get to meet my husband next month. Very good. <laughs> and, and I have to put, put that I'm so disappointed that I wasn't able to call him tonight and say that it was <laughs> passed and that I did it because this is what he does for a living and he has just been chomping at the bits. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell him to stay home next month too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smith, this is, am I correct that if, this is technicality, if she tables it, she can bring it before without submitting a new application and without new fees, is that correct? Yeah, she do an addendum to. So she can bring it back next week, next month with no, no right, because it's already advertised at 11 feet and no more fees for example right. okay no, no, she's all set all right um, sure we did that right anything else on this application we're all done on the application next item on the agenda is communications any communications other no, than the only thing I the only massive thing, communications we had tonight the only thing I want to discuss I guess was if the board you know because we got a couple of new members um, if they wanted a workshop or, for the two members and, and uh, refresher for everybody else. I think it would be a great idea. Yeah. Any objections? Um, I'm and sure they would appreciate What we do that. is we meet an hour before we start at 6 with, with a workshop with, with pizza. Yeah. And then we start at a regular meeting at 7. That would be great. When you you want to do that during May? Yeah, for, for May. May, OK. okay. That would be great. Yeah. Um, and we'll verify that Pete is still on. <laughs> <laughs> Because if we can't find his nameplate here. Yeah. Well, you, after tonight, you guys might not want me on. I might get subtle hints. <laughs> subtle hints are coming your way. <laughs> Any other? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just uh, yep. um, I just uh, like to move that we express our condolences to Laurie Palanza on the loss of her daughter Rachel, and as I discussed with you earlier, the possibility that the board may jointly do something um, if the uh, opportunity arises with the school. Yes, um, I strongly support that. Um, Mr. Walsh and I talked about that before the meeting, and uh, we'll have a, further discussions about that after the Great. meeting. Um, but I strongly support that idea, and um, we're all very saddened by that situation. And wish her the best. Um, any other business for today? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. We're adjourned. Thank you, John.